Hi there friends, uh, welcome to another one. In today's video, we're gonna be discussing the document flow. And because of that, I will have to introduce you to developer tools, web developer tools in the browser, because we will need, I will need to show you some things in relation to how some of the styles are loaded. If you remember, in one of the first lessons when I was introducing you to CSS, I mentioned that the browser as well has some default styles. So if you don't write any CSS, you know, heading looks like something, paragraph looks like something. So we're gonna discuss all of these things. Uh, I would highly advise you to, to take a look at this document. It's gonna give you a better overview of what I'm talking about. And then I've included the style origin, a little uh, link in here that describes this obviously, and it's uh, basically duplicated in here. So we're gonna discuss now um, how the elements in HTML and CSS by default are loaded, what the flow of the document is. In simple words, right? We're gonna discuss the positioning of certain elements. Uh, we're gonna discuss some display property and uh, the default. So, so just so you can kind of get an idea of, of how elements stack next to each other or below each other by default and why, right? So in order to do that, uh, as always, you're gonna open your VS Code. I have some a heading one and a paragraph. There is no CSS applied to it yet. Now, instead of uh, so far, we've been right clicking in our VS Code and clicking show preview. We know, we're not gonna do that now. For this lesson, we're gonna right click and we're gonna say uh, reveal in file explorer. And then I will open this index.html in my browser. So it looks like this, right? Now the next thing we wanna do, we wanna open web developer tools. So every browser has uh, a way, exposes a way for developers to inspect the contents of the document, of the HTML document, the CSS and JavaScript, right? If I right click on this document, you can see there's this little thing that says inspect, right? I can click it. And by default, uh, if I remember well, uh, if you have never done this, you, your window is going to be stacked here to the right. You can click on these three three dots in here and you can click this thing dock to bottom. Keep, keep in mind that this is not to say that there is a specific um, place where this should be. It's up to you if you have a, a lot larger screen. Right now I'm recording this whole bootcamp on a laptop. If you have an external screen, you can just as well keep it to the left, to the right. You can even... Uh, keep it as a separate window on a different screen, right? But let's let's take this slowly and then we're gonna get there. So once you open the developer tools, you're gonna see there's a bunch of these tabs here. And I want you to forget about every single one of them except the elements one. So the elements one is what we're gonna be sticking to until we get to the JavaScript part. And then once we get to the JavaScript, a lot of these are gonna be activated. We're gonna be using them a lot. Performance and memory, not so much, but we're gonna be using application. We're gonna be using the network. We're gonna be using sources and console a lot. But so for now, let's just stick to this one. So what is this elements panel? This elements panel just represents your actual HTML document. So as you can see here, this document that I have in my VS Code is basically, I can preview that in my Chrome browser right now. As you can see, I can see the exact representation of what I have in Visual Studio Code. And if, if you can see here, I can also uh, come here and see my heading one, I can see paragraph, I can see the contents of this paragraph, right? So exactly the same representation as here, right? Now the difference here and why this is so important is that as you can see that as I'm browsing my whole document, as you can see as I'm hovering over specific elements, you can see if I hover over the body, you can see that everything is kind of, uh, this, this, the, the area, the content area gets uh, blue and then there's some orange thing around it, right? What is this orange thing and what is this blue thing? Actually, if you remember from the previous video of the CSS box model, if I uh, actually just resize this a little bit because I know that there's my camera getting in the way, if I just maybe move this browser slightly bit here, right? You can see now that as I select any of the elements in this panel, right? You see these colors, right? If I select the body uh, element here in the left, you can see the, that uh, there's some blue color and the orange color. But you can see if I go here to the styles here in the, in the right panel right here and scroll a little bit down, you can see this is our actual box model. This, is, this view in the browser represents your CSS box model. So you can see, the blue thing, if I hover over this box, is the content, available content for my text and images. Then there's really no padding, there's no border, and then there's the margin eight pixels, right? So you remember from the pre previous video, now you can click on any of your elements in the HTML panel, and you can preview, you can see the box model of that element. You can see the margins, paddings, border, etc. So you can see here, if I click on heading one, you'll see that there's some margin. There's 20 pixels, 21 pixels, uh, top 21 pixels bottom right so 
But one interesting thing here, right, it, and the same if I go to the paragraph, we're gonna see similar with the paragraph, like paragraph has 16 pixels, right? So let me uh, enlarge this and let's discuss this a little bit. This is very important, right? So you, the, the logical question here now you can say is like, hey, Alex, um, where's this coming from, right? So where are these values coming from? If we go to our CSS file, right, there's no CSS of our own. We didn't write any. So how come that the heading one has all of these properties? Actually, if we click on the heading one again here, you can see here in the right panel, in the styles panel right here, this is some heading one style, but where is this coming from? I mean, we, we didn't write this certainly. And this is where this lesson today comes from. So you can, if, if, I, if I reduce the size of this a little bit again, you can see here that once I select the heading one thing, you can see here that it says user agent style sheet, right? So whenever you click on some of the elements in your, in your elements panel, you wanna inspect them, you wanna view the properties of that element in the styles panel. In this panel, you're gonna see the source, uh, where is this CSS coming from, right? As you can see here, we can see now, we can learn now that the H1 by default in Chrome browser, so this might differ slightly across the browsers, in Chrome, Heading one by default is a display block. We're gonna learn what a display is. Font size 2M, 2EM. We're gonna also discuss units in one of the next videos. So, uh, short story, you can see that browser brings in some default styles, right? And that's this user agent style sheet. So whenever you see this user agent style sheet, you will know that that's come from the browser, right? Let's actually go now and write some CSS. So let's go and apply some, let's say H1. And I'm just gonna say color red. So the only thing I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna add a create a, add a color to my heading one. That's pretty much all of it. And if you remember, we need to include our CSS file in here. So I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna say link and then relative path. If you remember, I'm gonna say style CSS. If I refresh this, now we can see that this is red. Okay, so what, what has changed in our styles panel? Well, you can see now if, if I actually uh, uh, kinda reduce the size of this a little bit, right? So you can see, you can see now when I select the H1, here we see the applied style, right? You, if, I, if I wanted, I can even play with the color. I can just fiddle with it. This is not gonna be saved in a file, but you can preview how things look like. But one distinction here is that instead of saying user agent style sheet, which we just learned that it comes from um, default browser styles, here it says style CSS, and then it says column one. If I click on that, it takes me to my actual CSS file. So I can see that this style now comes from my own CSS file, right? Let's add another property, right? So if I get over here, I can say font size, you know, for RAM, right? That's That should be a lot larger, right? And we can also see it here, right? Here it is, for RAM, right? Let's add more CSS. Let's say when I hover over this H1, I want the color to be, we're gonna use the pseudo selector if you remember, uh, and we're gonna say when I hover over this, I want the color to be purple, right? So you can see now, if you remember, now this is very important, you can see here, there, it says this column HOV, right? Uh, if I click on it, it's gonna give me this little panel here where I can fiddle with these states, with different states. If you remember when we discussed, in the, I think in one of the previous videos, we discussed that an element can have some classes and some states. So, you know, you can say, hey, I wanna style this only when it's hovered. So if I activate this hover state here, you can see now that it, that it stays active so this now view here enables me to 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 kind of inspect how my things look like look like in a certain state so here you can see i can click on this hey i select the h1 in the left i click on this hov here and then i can say check you know select the hover state make this element in a state hovered so this is now simulating that i'm actually moving my mouse over it Right, because this is this view is super useful when you want to design some hoverable state, but you don't want to be coming back here and hovering yourself. Oh, yeah, you know, let me make a change, then hover. Let me make a change. Instead of that, you can just force this state to be enforced right now. Now I can say okay, and then I can come here and I can preview style. So this is not going to be saved in a file, but let me show you. So you can see whenever you select any of these elements, you can actually write some CSS here. So here I can say element style and I can say, I don't know, uh, font style italic, right? So you can see I can write some styles here now just to preview them how they look like. Then I can toggle them on and off. I can remove this if I want, right? So this is not gonna be saved in your file. When you wanna actually save it, you still have to go to your file and add that. As you can see, for example, again, um, 
I can fiddle with it with different states, so you just saw the hoverable state. If I wanted to just style this when the element is hovered, I can again say font weight, uh, I don't know, some something very thin, let's say 100. Okay, this is, this is what I like. Then you can uncheck this hover, and now when you hover over it, right, you can see what's happening. So in simple words, here we have an ability to... Um, enforce some pseudo state or whatever so we can we can enforce some state like hey input is active input is focused and stuff Let, let's actually try with an input so if i actually get over here and i create an input of type text right i can now go to this input i can click on this little icon here to select it you can see it says select an element at the page to inspect it so i actually forgot to say right if we get back to this right so as you can see, I can be selecting, I can be searching for the HTML elements in here. So I can open my elements, I can open the elements tab, I can hover over them, or something that's going to be way more uh, pragmatic and useful and something that you're going to be doing a lot more. You can click on this icon and then you can choose here which element is that you want to inspect. So, you know, this document now is very small. We only have H1 paragraph and input, but generally HTML documents are going to be very large and it's going to be very less likely that you're going to be clicking this panel. Instead, you're going to come here and then you're going to click on elements that you're interested in. Actually, let's demonstrate this on a real website. If I go to techcrunch.com, right? and I right click and inspect, right? You can see that there's gonna be a huge HTML document. You can see there's a bunch of stuff in here, right? Then you can open things up. There's SVGs, there's a bunch of nested divs, there's a bunch of different scripts and stuff. So it, you can see it's not feasible that you go in there and you just click every single element until you find one. So again, as I said, instead of that, you can either click this icon or you can use a shortcut. You can see Control, Shift and C. But let's for now just keep clicking. So you can click and then you can say, okay, I want to see how TechCrunch did this. And then when you click on it, it takes you to that. You can see, we can see that this is an anchor tag now. It has some link, it has some class name, whatever. We can see that it's inside of the H3. So this is a little bit strange. You, you would generally wrap an H3, a heading in a, in a link, but doesn't matter. And then we can see that they are using the semantic, HTML5 semantic tag article. We're going to learn about these in the future. Uh, let me just close this so it doesn't get in the way. So, and, and then you can see I can just keep navigating from that point. I can even, if I want, I can right click on this and I can say edit as HTML, for example, and I can even copy this HTML. I can copy this whole thing or even easier, right? I can find what I'm interested in. So again, click on this, click over here, and then I can say, okay, I want to just copy all of this so you can right click and you can say copy and then you can choose what you want to copy copy the element there copy the selector so copy the uh, the class name on how you can select this so you can uh, copy different things and again as i said you can edit an html and copy this so i can uh, control a control c and then i can go to my editor and i can see i can inspect this i can format this document Let's try to format it again. It doesn't actually like it, so format with ESLint. It doesn't matter. Or I can go just to like format HTML online. So this is just for the sake if we're just playing now. What it? Hey, I want to just preview how this looks like, right? So if I format this, it actually has a hard time formatting for, for some reason. Maybe our markup isn't great. But actually, no, it is formatted. So this is an HTML5 semantic tag. You can see it has this class name blah 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 you get the point right so going back to our own example so i just wanted to show you this in the context of a re real website this is also the way how you can learn about how other websites are doing their html and css you can copy paste some things you can say wow i actually like this gradient here i really like this gradient how are they doing this right you can come here and you can say okay so this is the element right let me show you a trick so you can say okay this is the actual element so you can then right click you can edit as HTML and you can copy the contents of this. Let me actually show you. So I'm going to paste this thing in our own example here. And then how do we get the CSS, right? How can I get the CSS of this, right? Let me show you. You can right click, you can go copy, and then you can say copy styles. Let me show you. So now I can go in here and I can paste this. It's going to look a little bit weird. There's a bunch of stuff here. It looks actually wrong. So these aren't the styles. So we need to find something else. So right click again. Let's see copy styles outer selector copy element no so if we can't find the actual styles here because we can see that that wasn't really useful we can then navigate further down and this is probably on the h2 
So maybe these are the styles, but I can also see here the gradient text, gradient, blah, blah, blah. So you can see there's a bunch of classes or there seems to be a bunch of different CSS that we would have to copy. So in this context, this goes beyond the scope of this video. We would need to do this a little bit differently. We would have to locate their CSS. And I promise I'm gonna teach you this over time, but this goes beyond the scope. So let's actually stop this, stop uh, with this specific example because I feel we're going, we're making this a little bit complicated, right? So going back to our own document I was talking, so I can now click on this icon, I can select this input, and then I can say, how does this thing look when it's focused? So right now we can see there's no focus style, right? But if I go in my in, inside of my CSS and say input focus, and then I say background, this is just for demonstration purposes, this is not to make things pretty. Now if I say active, nothing happens. If I say focus, I need to refresh this. You can see now when I, when I enforce this state, hey, this element is focused. When I say enforce, I mean, you, can, you see when I click in, when, the, when my cursor is inside of the input, I want you to make it red. But if you don't want to need to, if you don't want to click every single time to see how the styles that you're uh, applying are changed, you can just say, okay, enforce the state, make this input now in a focused state, right? So I think you get the point. So you have this, you have these classes, you can, you can uh, use them like this. You can also like, for example, we can go and create an anchor tag in here. So I can go create a link as we call it, human beings, we call it a link. Let's say HTTPS uh, google.com go to Google, right? So let's imagine that I wanted to see how this looks like when it's visited, right? So I can, I guess, I think this this most likely would be a visited class. So I can click on this, I can say visited, but let's actually go and apply something. I can say anchor tag colon visited, and I can say uh, color green padding 10 pixels. I refresh and you can see now if I wanted, what is the visited state? Visited state is the state, I believe, that when the link was clicked, when it was actually, uh, when you when, when you clicked on it and then, then you marked it as visited, right? So you can see you have a bunch of possibilities here with the hover, hover class, right? Now, uh, let's, let's keep on going, right? So as you can see again, so now you know what this HTML element panel is for. You know that you can click on this and select whatever you want on the, ele on, on the website, right? Sometimes you will wanna see, hey, how would this look like if the margin w between them was, I don't know, X. So I can come here to the anchor tag, right? And then there's another thing. I can now click on this little plus icon here. Let me just move this. Here under the styles tab, right? There's this little plus icon, right? So if I select an element, let's say anchor and I click plus, you can see that it's gonna create a selector here for me. So it says A and something. And then I can start writing some CSS, right? So I can now say margin, left 10 pixels right and you can see this element went 10 pixels from from this input right i can say color blue the reason why the color isn't blue now unfortunately is because uh because of the some precedent stuff but if i would enforce this using the important keyword it would work we haven't discussed important yet so ignore it for now uh, you can see now one important thing is if you remember we we discussed this uh, CSS origin thing if, if you don't remember if we go to our lesson here so we have this document flow and then we have uh, style origin you can see now when I'm writing some CSS in my developer tools about developer tools you can see that here it says where is it, where where is this style coming from it says inspector style sheet so this means that we're just writing CSS in our developer tools, we're not this, the source of the CSS is not the file, it's not the browser, it's me just playing with things right now, right? So you can see here, I can now live write some CSS and see how things look like. Keep in mind, these developer tools are gonna be your, you're gonna be staring 50% of the, at this of your time every single day, whenever working with front, right? Okay, so so that's great. So so let's now. So now when I gave you a little bit of a guide on on the developer tools, seeing you know where these, figuring out how the styles come, uh, where the styles come from, we're gonna focus on the document flow. Just before I forget, let's actually go and just check the la the the last the last one, the last source. So when I say H1 here, uh, hello world. I'm gonna use an inline style. If you remember, there were three ways that we can write CSS. There was internal styles, inline styles, and external CSS style sheets. Here I'm gonna say color brown, right? Font size, five RAM. It's gonna be really large, right? So if I refresh this, we can see now we have this hello world. If I click this icon and inspect it, look what's happening here, right? You can see, uh, 
color brown font size 5 RAM. But there's nothing, nothing is shown here. So where is this thing coming from, right? And you can see this is one of the other reasons why you want to avoid inline styles. As I said in the CSS introduction video is that you can see now that uh, there's really no source because the, C the style itself is coming from the HTML. It's part of the HTML. And if you remember when we spoke about in the introduction video to CSS, we said we don't want to use inline styles because they break separation of concerns. Our HTML uh, loses, loses its primary function, which is structure. Basically, we don't want to use HTML for styling and the structure. We want to use them separately, aka separation of concerns. We want to have an external CSS file that styles things and we want to have an HTML document that structures things, right? So you can see here, this is yet another reason uh, to, to avoid it because when you stumble upon this, you know, okay, so this now is somewhere on the element, right? But you can see if you want to inspect, if you ever stumble upon some style that, that's shown like this, element.style, that means it's an inline style. The style is applied on the element directly. Hopefully you will not be doing this, but there's going to be exceptions, as I said before. Okay, so that's great. So, but what I'm actually the most interested in right now is removing all the styles. And that's what, what I, what, when I said flow of the document, that's my own definition. So let me remove all the styles because I don't want to have any CSS and then I want to discuss this document flow, right? Let's just read this definition that I wrote together so we can be on the same page. So what do I refer of a, as a document flow? The concept of the flow of document in web development refers to the way HTML elements are laid out on a web page by default without any CSS styling to uh, change their position. It's essential to understand several key concepts to fully grasp this idea. Okay, before we proceed with that, let's click here by default and let's see what did I mean. So here you have a list. This is a great resource. You have a list of default browser styles applied to most commonly used elements. So you can see that the div itself has a display position of block. We're going to learn in the upcoming, the next video about position and block. Uh, sorry, position and display properties. But this is a good resource for you to take a look at. So... Going back here, right, and I'm re refreshing this, so let's start discussing this flow of the document. So you can see that we have this heading one, right? We learned so far that the reason why this has this black color, why it's, why it's bold and stuff is because this style is applied by default by the browser. And the browser has some opinions on how things should look like if they have no CSS, if they weren't overwritten by user CSS file, right? You can see that here we have a display. So heading one is a, of type display, display block, right? Uh, block positioned elements always occupy the full line. If I actually hover over this H1 element, you can see this blue line. As, as if we learned, if I scroll a little bit down here, or I click on this computer tab, we're going to see this, this area that says, you see this blue area. So you can see that the Every single blocks, block uh, defined element of display type block always occupies the full width of the page. Why is this? Why did the writers of the browser of this uh, internal style sheet, why did they decide? It's because it's kind of logical, right? Because if you think about the, if we take, uh, uh, if I take uh, H1 paper like this, right? And if I was to write, if I was to write an article by hand, probably my title on this document would take its own line just like when you go to school elementary school you know you, you your your some essay or whatever has a title and that's usually not in the same line with the script with the rest of the content right so this applies in the same fashion to the html document so headings generally are will occupy the full width of the page then you have things which are in line you have things you have content you have descriptions summaries and stuff and they're usually scramble together there in the same line so you can see the paragraph itself as well if we click on a paragraph and go to the styles here you can see that the paragraph as well occupies the full line of the of of, of its content right it would also make sense because you're going to have one paragraph two paragraphs three paragraphs right or n number of paragraphs right but there are certain elements which are not of display block there's something there's some elements are of display in line and again, we're going to learn about the display in the next video. But for now, we're just discussing how documents by default are structured. The elements of display type inline are elements like anchor tag. So if I let me show you, let me show you why that is. So if I type an anchor, let's imagine that this text sa said 
the best website on the planet is and then I create an anchor tag HTTPS www.programmer.network and then here I say programmer network right if I refresh you'll see that the anchor tag is in line with the rest of the text why because we don't want this to go to a new line so if I actually click on this anchor you can see here that it says I can go to this filter and I can type display I can I can see what type this is and if I actually click on computed here under the computer tab I can actually see that so if I search for display here you can see that the display that's applied to this is in line so basically the anchor tag the browser thinks that the things like anchors should be in line because generally when you're using links you want them together with the text right if if this anchor tag was a dis display type block let me actually show you so if the de if the default behavior of this was a block then this would look like this right and that would make no sense why would i want to uh why would i want i, I don't want my text to break right you see this is one sentence so I, I don't want this link to go to a new line so if i remove this you'll see the best website on the planet is programmer network in the world this is just super random and accurate sentence but you get the point so when we discuss the flow of the document we discuss these default behaviors how these elements in html behave by default in in the browser right uh, so we are th thinking about the text we're thinking about the headings we're thinking about the divs so why is the div div as well when, when whenever we write a div that div is going to occupy full width right so there are many elements out there but this explains the concept for the most part you can see here we have block level elements and this is what we're going to discuss when we discuss the display property and position as well but you can see that some elements by nature are in line so anchors spans for example let's let's have a span right let's imagine that you wanted to write a sentence that says something like this my name is Alexander and I'm 35 years old so if I take a look at this imagine that I wanted to make this this Alexander bold and I wanted to make 35 years old also bold or whatever how would I do that well, I would use some inline, some element that's of type inline, and then I would put a class on it or something. So how can I do that? Well, I can use a span, which is also an inline element, and I can also say 35, and I can put a span there as well, right? What can I do now? Well, now I can create some utility in my CSS. I can call it text bold, for example, and I can also, because if you remember, we learned that classes are reusable uh, utilities, we can... We create something that we can reuse across other HTML elements. Now if I come here, I can say text bold and I can say font weight bold, right? You can see now it says my name is Alexander and I'm 35 years old, right? So you can see we created a class called uh, text bold, whatever we call it. But the point here is, is that you can now see why span, for example, as an element is an inline element because we want we don't want to break the flow of the document we don't want this paragraph to go to a new line if I have by accident used instead of a span if I have used a div right if I said div this would have a completely different behavior right because this div this is now instead of a div if div is a block type element so it's gonna take full width of the page and this 35 now would do the same so it would it would break the flow of this document right so going back to the span, so you can see now some elements have display type of inline, some have inline block, which we're going to learn in the, one of the next videos, some are block type, etc, etc, etc. And of course we have flexbox and grid, we're going to have separate videos for these because those are more advanced ways to do layout, right? Okay, so to recap and please read this document, so we can see that style sheets can come from several places. Uh, we can see that the, ele that the document flow, as we refer to it, is a flow of how some uh, how some elements of some type are laid out on the screen, how are block type elements laid out, how are inline elements laid out, and why are they inline and why are they blocked. And then we learned about the developer tools. Again, the developer tools, we're only going to stick to the elements panel. We learned that we can select elements manually by hovering over them. And then, of course, more practically, we can see how to use it by how to select an element by clicking on this and then selecting whatever we want. So if I wanted to select the span, I can click on it. And then you can see by automatically here under the elements panel, we can see it selected. And then we learned about, yeah, you can change the properties here. You can play with it. 
you can go you can take a look at the box model here so you can see my span right now doesn't have any box model pro properties applied and you can see that the content area it has width and height of auto because all the inline elements and uh, all the inline elements the, their width and height is automatically determined by the browser based on the content size that they need so the content determines uh, the width and height hence that's why it's set to auto right um, there's few other things of course we're gonna learn these things over time I'm trying to I'm not actually this is not some majestic plan it's just a logical uh, set of circumstances here we're gonna learn all of this I promise you in time as we uh, reveal new features new complexities etc etc so if you focus on this this is gonna be more more than enough okay so with that said that has been the f flow of the document with including developer tools because there's unfortunately no other way to explain the document flow without including the developer tools uh, in the next video i'm gonna combine two things into one a display property and position property so stay tuned to, tuned to that what i want you to do for this specific lesson now i want you to go to let's say programmer network for example, I want you to inspect the page, see how I did CSS on a, on a real website, on a production ready, very complicated uh, platform. So you're going to see a bunch of different classes. I want you to go to your favorite websites, go to some gaming website if you're playing the games, go to TechCrunch, go to any website that you like and just right click on things. Right click on, hey, I like this gradient, right? How can I inspect it? Right click on it, inspect, right? You'll see that it's going to select it. So, so research, see how the re reality is, try to... Even though it's very early, we're still very early, you can start kind of getting a feel of, of, of how people are doing things, how, how people are writing classes. You can inspect the properties of this, you can go to computer tab, take a look at the box model, you know, where, how big are the margins, how big are things, etc, 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 right? So it's very, very important. Uh, so I think that's it for now. Very important lesson. Play with this a little bit, and then in the next video, we're going to do display and position. With that said, as always, I wish you guys best. Please like, subscribe, join my streams every evening almost. Now, now currently, I'm on vacation, but I'm streaming a lot. If you have any questions, join my live streams. Ask a question. Ask a question in the comment section, and uh, let's go from there. Um, I wish you guys best. Peace out.